Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach. I follow Weight Watchers and I count calories and macros. Happy Sunday. It is Sunday, so today we're doing something pretty fun. We are going to do a Q&A get ready with me. So I'm going to put on my makeup for today. I'm actually going out with my boot camp girls tonight. So we're going to do a more neutral, but maybe a little more glam type of look. And then I'm going to answer all of your questions. So I posted both in my Facebook group and over on Instagram for questions, and we got a lot of them. So hopefully I can get through them all in today's video. I won't be going into detail with the makeup that I'm applying, but I will link everything down below for you. So if you're excited, give this video a big, huge thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and your bell's turned on because I upload five videos every week. And Sunday, we always do something fun and exciting. As I mentioned, I will link all of my skincare. I have done my skincare for the morning down below, as well as all of the makeup that I'm applying today, nutrition coaching, where I offer personalized to you macros and calories, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching for accountability, or if you would like to chat with me, directly. Links and discounts to my favorite things and my Facebook group. Come join us there. We would love to have you. So I'm going to zoom you in. I have my phone. I screenshotted all of the questions. So let's jump in. Also, if you didn't know, I have a beauty channel where I do a lot of makeup tutorials. We do a subscription box unboxings, testing out new makeup, new products, talking about new makeup. So I'll put my beauty channel down below for you because I know a lot of you are always curious about how I apply my makeup and I have lots of tutorials over on that channel. So like I said, I've already done all of my skincare. So I'm going to start with my complexion product and start answering your question. So the first question on Instagram was, did you teach yourself to apply makeup or watch tutorials. So I have always loved makeup my whole life. I mean, I remember in junior high asking my mom and dad for a vanity for Christmas so that I would have a place to apply my makeup. I've always loved makeup. I have never been professionally trained on how to apply makeup. I just do my makeup based on my preferences and my eye shape and the types of makeup that I like to wear. I do watch some tutorials online. I actually really love beauty YouTube. So I do watch a lot of tutorials, but I am 100% self-taught when it comes to makeup. The next question is, how does your husband feel about your weight loss and your upcoming plastic surgery. So he is very, very proud of me as husbands should be for losing all of the weight. And when I first told him that I wanted to have plastic surgery, he was not unsupportive, but kind of said, I don't understand why you look fine. And so I had to just explain to him that it's something that's important to me for my self-confidence, for my self-esteem, for me to feel comfortable in my body after all of the weight loss and after kind of sitting down and explaining it, he is fully on board. I mean, obviously he's concerned about me having surgery because every surgery has a risk, but as far as plastic surgery, he understands that I've worked really hard to get where I am. So he is hundred percent on board and he's very proud of me for my weight loss. Next question is tell us something about you that you've never told us before. So this is kind of a hard one because I feel like I tell you guys everything. I'm very upfront, honest, trans transparent here on my channel about things. So I don't really have any like skeletons in my closet or deep dark secrets that I can share with you. But one thing kind of random that you may not know about me is that I'm an only child. And oh, I get it. I do get asked sometimes if I have siblings and no, I am 100% an only child. Next is what are you anxious about right now? Honestly, I'm not an anxious person. I'm pretty, pretty even keel, but you guys know that Lola was diagnosed with lymphoma cancer. She's been going through chemo. She's actually doing really, really well, but my lab diesel is not. He has a pretty swollen leg. He's having a hard time getting around. And those tough decisions are inevitable for us within a short period of time. So I'm not just anxious about that, but obviously very sad and devastated with that being something that we really need to consider for his well-being and his overall quality of life. Next is, do you have some suggestions for somebody who cannot 
eat sugar-free products because it makes me sick. So you don't have to eat sugar-free products. I'm not sure where it came from that people think that we have to consume sugar-free things. If it doesn't work well with your body and your stomach, then just eat regular sugar. You just have to eat a little bit less of it to make it fit into your points or your macros, but you don't have to eat sugar-free or fat-free foods to lose weight. You can eat whole real food. And like I said, the things that are a little bit more calorically dense, you just have to eat a little bit less. The next question is, do you have any siblings? And I actually answered that when I told you guys a little, little secret about myself. And then we have, do you use Botox or any filler because your face does not look 47 at all? No shame, I use Botox. So I actually get this question a lot. And no, I have actually never done Botox. I have never done any type of filler. However, I take very good care of my skin. I have always been heavily involved in skincare and had a really regimented skincare routine. And like I said, I'll link all the skincare that I'm currently using down below for you. I do change it up. I don't really have any staple skincare products. There are certain ones that I prefer in the morning. There are certain types of products that I prefer, you know, before I go to bed that are a little bit more hydrating, a little bit more deep penetrating. But no, I've actually never had Botox or filler. I'm not opposed to it down the road, but at this point, it's just not something that I feel like I need to have. Next question is, have you noticed any changes, good or bad, in your hair from losing weight? So I have not had any hair loss from my weight loss. Usually hair loss comes from a really severe calorie deficit. So if you are in, I guess, what could be called an unhealthy deficit and you're not giving your body the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that it needs, that's generally where hair loss comes in. And I have not suffered from any of that, but you also have to remember that I've eaten quite a few calories throughout my weight loss. I make sure that I'm eating enough calories to sustain my body. So no, I haven't noticed any differences, bad or good in my hair, nor have I had any hair loss. Next is, do you have any tips or tricks for spacing out meals, especially when you're you're overly hungry. So here's the thing about spacing out your meals. If you space them out throughout the day and you consistently consume food, so every about two to three hours, not only does it keep your metabolism going, but it's also going to keep you from being overly hungry and going into the next meal just ravenously hungry and risking overeating. So the key is making sure that you consume a snack or a meal about every two to three hours. Once you do that regularly, your hunger signals will kick in, your metabolism will kick in, and you will be hungry in those two to three hour increments. And again, you won't go into meals ravenously hungry and overeating. Also, side note on that, make sure all your meals and snacks contain protein. Next is, can you do a hair tutorial? I love how you do your hair. Yes, that is something that I want to do over on my beauty channel. So like like I said, make sure you subscribe to that if you're interested in just beauty content in general, but I actually get asked this a lot about my hair, so I definitely plan on doing a tutorial. Please share your planning tips. I know that you have a very busy life with YouTube and coaching. So luckily for me, I'm very much a planner. I am definitely a type A personality, so I like things in their place. I'm very self-driven, very self-motivated. So for me, I rely heavily on my planner that's actually sitting right here, as well as just planning ahead. And I have a system where I sit down in the morning and get through my emails and I make sure that I check my emails multiple times throughout the day, but I live and die by my planner. That's why you see me meal plan. That's why you see me meal prep. Just making sure that everything is in place so that it's not overwhelming and so that nothing falls to the wayside. So I can make sure that everything gets done in my personal life, over on, on my YouTube channel, and of course with coaching. So I got asked again if I have any siblings and then if my parents are still alive. So my mother is, yes, she lives in Washington. Uh, I know that that was something that I mentioned when we moved to Arizona that was hard for me to, to leave my mom there, but she is thriving. She has a ton of friends there. She's very happy in Washington. And unfortunately, my dad passed away about 10 years ago at 64 from a heart attack. So I did lose my dad about 10 years ago, but fortunately he is buried in the VA cemetery in Phoenix. So now that I live in Arizona, I get to visit him frequently. So next question, I actually really like this question. It says, I'm 56 and I want to wear more makeup. I love how you do yours. What is your opinion? Listen, it's makeup. It washes off at the end of the day. It's a form of self-expression. It's not that serious. Wear whatever makeup you wanna wear. And you guys know that people 
always have an opinion on my makeup. Whether it's that they like my makeup or they think I wear too much makeup. The reality is, is it's your face and you can do whatever you want to do. And like I said, it's not that serious. It comes off at the end of the night. Wear all the makeup that you wanna wear. That is part of self-expression and that's part of being you and whatever that means, whether you wear no makeup or wear a lot of makeup, it doesn't really matter. And honestly, it's nobody else's business how much makeup you decide to wear. So I say, layer it on girl if that's what you want to do so next is when i have to track my food i think about food all day long are there any alternatives i get that because you are always thinking about what you're going to eat so that you remember to track it that it fits into your day whether it be points macros calories you do end up thinking about food all the time i find i feel like that's very normal when you are in a calorie deficit or trying to lose weight that you are thinking about food pretty regularly because it does become a big part of your life it becomes a focus especially as you're trying to lose weight my recommendation for you if you find that you're overwhelmed with thinking about food is make take a little bit of a tracking break spend a couple days where you're not tracking your food so that you can give yourself a little bit of break a break from thinking about food all the time but just know when you're in a calorie deficit and you do have to kind of plan ahead and plan your meals it is going to take up some of your space and things that you're thinking about but it's important also to track your food for success the same person that asked about tracking her food asked me if I think intuitive eating work which would take the pressure off of having to track your food and think about food all day absolutely intuitive eating is the goal that is my goal once I reach my weight loss goal, once I have my plastic surgery, my goal is to intuitively eat, to not have to track my food for the rest of my life. But what you have to remember is you have to be in a place with food to do that. You have to have a healed relationship with food. You have to you have to know portions. You have to know what types of foods that you need to eat to maintain your weight and what types of foods you need to eat to hit your protein goal every day. I think intuitive eating should be the end goal for anybody on a weight loss journey. You just have to make sure that number one, you've lost your weight, you've maintained your weight and you've healed your relationship with food before you gravitate towards intuitive eating. Do you think you would be where you are in your weight loss if you would not have moved to Arizona? I have actually gotten this question a lot or I've even had people say you wouldn't have lost all that weight if you moved if you didn't move to Arizona. What does Arizona have to do with it? The way losing weight requires consistency, dedication. It has nothing to do with where you live. Now, can I move my body a little bit more? Can I be outside pretty much year round? Absolutely. We lose weight by, by food, not by where we live, not even by moving our body or being able to go outside and take a walk every day or living in a warm climate. We lose weight by our food choices, being in a calorie deficit. So yes, absolutely. I would have reached my goal in Washington just like I reached my goal in Arizona. I'm just fortunate enough to live in a warm climate now where I can be a little more active outside. But like I said, weight loss starts in the kitchen, fitness starts in the gym. And the last question on Instagram is, do you ever say no to any product reviews? This is funny. Uh, yes, absolutely. I probably get 20 emails a day from companies asking me to review products on my channel, whether they want to partner with me for a video or just send me the product and then have me review it. I don't share anything with you guys that I don't love or that I don't personally use. So yeah, I do say no to a lot of opportunities for product reviews. And you also have to remember that sponsored videos, paid promotions, that's how we get paid. So when you watch my videos here on YouTube, yes, I get paid from AdSense, which comes from YouTube. It is not very much. It's certainly not enough to pay my mortgage and live on. So the way that content creators do make a living is by paid product promotions. But for me, I don't promote products, like I said, that I don't love and that I don't use. So everything I share with you are things that I use every day. Motivate, just Better Fiber, Collagen for Her, et cetera, et cetera. Those are things that I use every single day or home products that I love or Timu for clothing. Those are the things that I wear and use every single day. So yes, absolutely, I say no to product promotions. I say no way more than I say yes. And I just wanna be clear that there's nothing wrong with paid videos and paid sponsorships. Think about it this way, would you work for free? And if the answer to that is no, if you wouldn't show up to your job every day and not get paid for it, then you need to remember that as content creators, full-time content creators, this is our job. So we have every right just like you to get paid for it. Now I'm moving over to Facebook and it looks like I have 74 questions. It's likely we're not gonna get through all of them. So let me know if you guys would be interested in a part two, but I'm gonna start at the top. And the first question is, tell us how you and Troy met. I don't 
recall you ever mentioning this. Before I answer that, I am going to use the Tarte Man Eater After Dark palette to do my eyeshadow look today. I really, really love this palette. It's very much a neutral palette. I'm going to apply my MAC Paint Pot eyeshadow base, and Troy and I actually met online on match.com back in 2015 and then we ended up buying our first house together and we actually got married in 2017 so we've been married for almost what six years seven years now so yeah we met online which is seems to be the norm for people these days next question are those your real lips and if so not fair yes 100 percent. these are my lips like i said i have never had any botox or any filler. I do feel very fortunate that I was blessed with pretty full lips. My dad also had very full lips, but my mom, hers are more on the thin side, so I was lucky enough to get that trait from my dad. Where do you find your recipes and do you use an eyeshadow base? So all of my recipes come, I find online. Generally, they are recipes created by someone else that I just make modifications to fit into the Weight Watchers program and to fit into calories and macros. So sometimes substituting lower fat, lower calorie, lower point items. I always link the original recipe on my recipe website. So if you wanna know who the recipe came from or maybe you wanna create it as it originally stood, I always have it linked on my recipe website and yes, I do use an eye base. This is the MAC Paint Pot and Painterly. Do you think that you'll track for the rest of your life? Does it bother you at all? Do you get sick of planning of food, thinking about food and calories? Yes, it works, but sometimes I get tired of worrying about it. So we kind of talked about this already. No, I do not plan on tracking my food for the rest of my life. I am planning on tracking my food until I have reached my weight loss goal and maintained that weight loss goal. So for me, that's going to be a while. It's going to take some time to recover from plastic surgery to really know where my body is after it's not swollen anymore and after I'm fully recovered and kind of where my weight is at that point and figuring out if that's that point where I would be maintaining my weight. And for me, I definitely want to maintain my weight for a while before I go to intuitive eating and stop tracking. So like I said, I think that intuitive eating and not tracking your food forever should be everybody's end goal. What is your skincare routine? I have dark circles under my eyes and your skin looks great. So like I said, I have a very regimented skincare routine. I have a morning skincare and I have an evening skincare routine. Now the products that I use vary. I do get a lot of beauty subscription boxes so I'm always testing out new serums and moisturizers and eye cream. The key to flawless skin and flawless makeup because remember your makeup's not going to look good if the skin underneath isn't healthy is to have a regular skincare routine where you're washing your face exfoliating your face, taking care, of, taking care of your skin. That is really the key to having beautiful skin. And then finding products that work for your skin. I have a little bit more normal to dry skin, so I gravitate towards products especially skincare that lends itself to that type of skin. I will put, like I said, all of my current skincare in the description box for you. What's your opinion about WW buying sequins and promoting a weight loss drug? So I actually have talked about this on an Instagram story and it, there's actually a post in my Facebook group as well where I talk about my thoughts on WW not only buying a telehealth company and promoting a weight loss drug. The bottom line is I feel like if your program worked, you wouldn't have to promote a weight loss drug, right? If you say, hey, follow this program, kind of like I tell my clients, track your macros and calories and you're going to lose weight. Now, if I told my clients, track your macros and calories, you're going to lose weight. And then I said, but wait, you can take this weight loss drug, this shot every day that's going to help you lose weight because my program doesn't work right? That's where I have the issue is saying that your program works, promoting your program, having people pay for your program. And then on the flip side, talking about how you can benefit your weight loss with this weight loss drug. Now, I think there's a time and place for these types of drugs, these shots for weight loss, but I don't think that a company that claims that they have a sustainable program, sustainable lifestyle would need to promote such products. That's just my opinion. You know, we all have our opinions. That's the great thing about the world is we can all have different opinions on things. How long did it take you to get your weight loss and nutrition coach certification and training? Was any of it in person or all online? So I actually just renewed and I'll show you. 
I just renewed my uh, nutrition coaching certification. So this is saying that now I'm valid through 226 of 25. So I actually did my nutrition certification all online through NASM. So it's an online only program. And then you do have to renew it every two years. So like I said, I just renewed my my certification for two more years and you have to take a test, pay a fee, take a test. That's how you renew your certification, but it's all done online and it's all done on your own time, which is actually really, really nice so that you can, if you have a regular job or kids, you can kind of take it on your own time. And then to get your certification, you just have to pay and pass the test. How do you eat when you have a cold? This is where I want to reach for comfort food. This is very normal. When we don't feel good, our body wants comfort food, which is generally in the form of carbohydrates. Now we know carbs aren't bad, but when you're not feeling well, carbs isn't necessarily what your body needs. I would reach for things like fruits that have vitamin C, like oranges and citrus, that's going to help you combat that cold and not feeling well. And also in, have those comfort foods. If you're not feeling well, it's okay to have some comfort food. The great thing about food is nothing's off limits. No food is bad or good. And if you're not feeling well, you can have that comfort food. Nobody gained weight by eating a little bit of extra comfort food when they're not feeling well. Just track it and move on. So the next question is, I would love to know what your favorite part of your health journey is so far. And she did say, you know, I don't want to call it a weight loss journey because I know for you, it's also just, it's more about your health than about weight loss. And that is absolutely true. There are so many great things that have happened since I took control of my weight and took control of my health. One of the things I will say that resonates with me on this health journey is just how much more confident I am in my body. I don't feel like I have to hide anymore. I used to go out early in the morning or late at night so nobody could see me. I was embarrassed about my body. I was embarrassed to go out in public. I hated to travel because it wasn't comfortable on the airplane and I was just, like I said, uncomfortable in my skin and my body hurt. My body hurt all the time. I was uncomfortable physically. I was uncomfortable mentally. And now I just have so much more confident. And you guys know I love to travel. I mean, that's one of my big goals this year. It was even a goal for me last year is to travel as much as possible. My self-confidence just radiates. And that's very important to me. And second to that is my body just feels so much better. I don't have the aches and pains that I used to have. My knees don't hurt. My back doesn't hurt. I feel really the healthiest, both physically and mentally, that I've ever been. And that's my favorite part of this entire journey journey. So this next question is a really good one. Why do you think that you've lost more weight tracking macros and calories than you did on WW? So if you didn't know, I really focused on macros and calories start at the start of 2022. So this last year, I really shifted my focus from WW to calories and macros, making sure I was eating enough calories eating enough protein every single day. And I lost 90 pounds in 2022. So the majority of my almost 140 pound weight loss came from 2022 and that was tracking macros and calories. The big difference is, is I made sure that I ate enough. The main reason, honestly, that I've been more successful tracking macros and calories is because it allowed me to heal my relationship with food. I was truly able to eat, I am truly able to eat whatever I want I just track it, I move on, even if it goes over my calories or over my macros. And because I can eat whatever I want, I don't restrict or eliminate any foods anymore. Not only has it healed my relationship with food, but it is sustainable and it's a lifestyle for me. Where WW is not a lifestyle. I didn't eat enough, I was always hungry, I was never satisfied. I actually did a whole video on mistakes I made on WW. So I'll link that down below if you missed it, but it just wasn't sustainable for me. And macros and calories is sustainable for me. I don't feel like I'm on a diet. This is literally my lifestyle. I eat, as you guys know, whatever I want. I just work it into my day. And for me, that helped me lose those 90 pounds really effortlessly. It wasn't hard to do. And it's it healed my relationship with food 100% where I'm confident in saying that I'm not going to ever gain my weight back. This is the new me and this is the new me to stay in macros and calories is what I have to thank for that. And honestly, the only regret I have is not doing them sooner. So if you're on the fence about macros and calories, invest in yourself. It's a small investment to have me do your macros and calories and it literally changes your life. 
take it from me. The next question is, what company is my trainer through? So my fitness coach. My fitness coach is actually an independent coach. She lives in Florida. She's an online coach only. A lot of you have reached out asking about her. She's not taking new clients right now, but I would recommend if you're interested in a trainer, decide if it's someone you want to have locally. If you feel like you need someone with you in person to drive you, correct your form, then maybe choose an in-person trainer. Or if you just want someone to help guide you and be accountability, an online trainer is a great option. Do those stick-on bras really hold up the girls or provide coverage? I'm a little bit skeptical. So she's talking about the Nador bras that I've shared here on my channel lots and lots and lots of times. Yes, they absolutely hold everything up. You guys know that that's a problem area for me. Mine are not perky. Does it, up, does it give you coverage? No, it's a stick-on bra. It actually lays underneath your breast, but it holds it up. So if you want to wear a halter top or a strapless top, the Nador ones work so, so well. I can't recommend them enough. I know you have a lemon tree in your backyard. Have you thought about making homemade lemonade? No, uh, because number one, I don't love lemonade. I know that that sounds kind of weird. And usually lemonade is really sugary. So no, I don't really use my lemons for lemonade. I put lemon in my water every day. And then of course, anytime I need lemons to grate or add to a recipe, I actually am considering making Troy a lemon meringue pie or maybe lemon bars because that's one of his favorite lemony desserts. I do feel really blessed to have the lemon tree in my backyard. Next is what do you do to stop emotional eating. Now this is a really, really good question. I am really not an emotional eater as much as I am a bored eater. So if I, when I'm watching TV at night, that's when I feel like I need a snack. That's when I think I'm hungry, but I'm not hungry. But I know that that comes in many forms. Some people are stress eaters. Some people are emotional eaters. Some people are bored eaters. This is a question I could go on and on about to give you an answer. But what I think I'll do if you're interested is I can actually do an entire video on how to combat emotional eating, bored eating, stress eating. Let me know down in the comments if you would be interested and I can give you some of my tips in an exclusive video. Did you ever try the HCD, HCG diet or keto or any of those other diets or did you only do Weight Watchers and macros? Girl, I have tried everything. I have been overweight my entire life. I actually think the only time I was a normal weight is when I was very, very young. So yeah, of course, I have tried every single diet. But what you have to remember is none of those things are sustainable. None of them are going to work. Yeah, they might work in the short term, but they're not sustainable. And when whatever you do to lose weight, you have to do that same thing to maintain your weight. So whenever you think about these fast fix diets like keto or HCG or even Weight Watchers, think to yourself, ask yourself, is this something I can do for Ever. And if the answer to that is no, it's probably not the right plan for you. For me, macros and calories is sustainable for me. It's something I can do forever. Like I said, it doesn't feel like a diet. It's it's my lifestyle now. So for me, the answer to that question is yes. And that is what's caused, and that's partially why I feel like I've been so successful with macros and calories, but I have tried everything. And another thing to think about is if all of these fast fix, quick fix diets worked, nobody would be overweight. I'm going to apply some lashes. The next question is how did you start working out? I actually get asked this question a lot. People ask me, you know, do I have to exercise to lose weight? Weight loss starts in the kitchen and fitness starts in the gym. And remember, you can't out exercise a bad diet. So my recommendation for you would be to focus on food first. Get your food under control before you implement a workout routine. Basically, baby steps. Take baby steps. You don't have to do everything at once. And like I said, working on your food and making sure that you're able to stay in a healthy calorie deficit and work towards that, fixing your relationship with food, that's what's going to make the biggest difference. And then add in your exercise once you're at a good place with food. So if you follow me, you know that I really didn't start exercising. I didn't hire my fitness coach until June of 2022. So I had lost quite a bit of weight. And in fact, half of the year of 2022 following calories and macros, I didn't really work out consistently at all. I mean, I would hit the gym here and there. I would go to jazzercise here and there, but I didn't actually have a consistent workout routine until June of last year. And I actually didn't really, I didn't even join boot camp until October of 2022. So just a few months ago, focus on food first, get your food under control before you stress out about exercise. Now, if you want to take a walk or move your body, more power to you. That's fantastic. Actually walking is one of the best forms of exercise for weight loss, but don't stress about a workout routine until you have your food under control. Next question is what makeup remains? 
remover do you like? So I go back and forth between face makeup remover. I actually use a cleansing balm. I always double cleanse, so I use a cleansing balm. I'm not particular on the brand. They all really work the same. So typically drugs, drugstore is what I'll purchase. And then same with face wash. I'm not really particular on face wash. You're just going to use it to remove your makeup and then rinse it off. I just use whatever comes in my beauty subscription boxes, but I do have a favorite eye makeup remover that I think works the best and is super affordable. And that's actually the eye makeup from Sephora, from the Sephora brand. And I'll link it down below for you. That is really the only eye makeup remover I use. What do you do when you feel like your weight loss is not moving in the right direction or that you're stalled? I've never actually had a stall. I mean, obviously I have weight fluctuation. That's very normal. So my weight is going to fluctuate and the closer you get to your weight loss goal, the slower the weight loss is going to be. But there are a few things that you can do to change it up. Number one, you need to make sure that you're eating enough. So don't pull back on your calories just because you feel like you're in a stall. And remember a stall or a plateau is when your weight stays the same for weeks, not just for a few days or even a week. So continue eating all your calories and maybe change up your food a little bit. We can get stuck in a rut of eating the same foods and our body gets used to that. Kind of like a workout routine. You change it every four to six weeks. So make, maybe try changing up your food a little bit to see if that gets the scale moving in the right direction. You can even up your activity as well. Do you stop eating at a certain time of the day, say like 7 p.m. or do you just eat when you're hungry? I just eat when I'm hungry. You have to remember our bodies do not tell time. Our body doesn't know that it's 7 p.m. Our body doesn't know that it's 5 a.m. Our body has no idea. And you can really eat whenever you need to eat, whenever you're hungry. Think about people who are on graveyard and swing shift. I mean, they eat at random times and that doesn't mean that they're going to gain or lose weight. Again, your body does not tell time. It's better to eat when you're hungry. Now, if you have a hard time sleeping, if you eat late at night, then that's when you might want to cut yourself off a little bit early before bed, maybe one or two hours. But in reality, our body doesn't tell time. And it's really important to listen to your hunger signals. And if you're hungry before you go to bed, then eat something. It's definitely better than going to bed hungry. And, re and just remember, your body has no idea what time it is. I haven't been able to get my exercise in because I haven't been feeling well. Do I need to adjust my macros? No. I still eat the same calories and macros on days that I don't exercise as days that I do. It's an average over the course of the week. So the only time you would need your macros readjusted is once you've lost about 15 to 20 pounds or if your workout routine changes drastically permanently, not because you're sick, but if you are someone who doesn't exercise, then all of a sudden you're in the gym seven days a week, you probably wanna have your macros redone or vice versa. If you're someone who's really active like me and then all of a sudden you stop exercising altogether, then yes, you would need to have your macros redone. But because you're taking a break from exercise because you're not feeling well, just keep eating your same macros. If I'm eating based on my macros and muscle building is a priority, how much cardio is really needed? I love this question. If you follow me, you know that I don't do cardio. The only cardio I do is the cardio that I get from boot camp. If your goal is muscle building, whether it's bulking up or building even just lean muscle like me, strength training is your priority. So my recommendation would be two to three times a week, maybe 20 or 30 minutes of moderate cardio. You don't need to go crazy on the elliptical or the treadmill or run hundred miles, just moderate cardio. All of your energy and focus should be on strength training. If you want to do something like boot camp, like I do, that's a hit workout. That's great as well. Cause you're kind of killing two birds with one stone. You're getting in your cardio and some strength training, but you want to focus on hitting the gym and lifting those weights to build muscle. Are you ever tempted to binge or overeat? Let me put on my lip liner. Of course, I don't binge eat anymore. That's a part of my relationship with food that I've healed. But I would say that, I mean, the temptation to overeat is always there. And there are days that I go over my calories. Sometimes it's a little bit, sometimes it's a lot, but it all averages out in the end. Part of working on your relationship with food and focusing on healing it is stopping any binge eating if that's something that you suffer from. Again, if you guys would like a video on my tips and tricks for combating binge eating, definitely let me know down in the comments. I have a question like what skincare products I use on my face and neck. Again, all of that is linked down below. I'm going to answer this last question, finish getting ready for the day. I still have quite a few questions. So if let me know again, if you guys would like a part two, 
Maybe I can answer the rest of the questions while I do a hair tutorial, so let me know if you're interested. But the final question that I'm gonna answer is are you glad that you moved to Arizona? It seems like you really got your weight loss fast after you moved. Okay, back to the Arizona thing. Yes, I'm so happy we moved to Arizona. Best decision we ever made, but that has nothing to do with my weight loss. I wanna be clear on that, that I would have been exactly where I am right now if I still lived in Washington. The state that you live in does not dictate your weight loss. It's being consistent, being in a calorie deficit and doing what's right for your body. It has really truly nothing to do with where you live. And there's a couple little parts to the same question. How is Troy doing with the move? He's doing well. I mean, he still suffers from the same ailments. Like I said, depending on where you live doesn't change medical issues either. The warm weather definitely helps with mobility and joints, but he just yesterday saw the vascular doctor. But overall, we are both much happier physically and mentally here in Arizona. And lastly, are you still going to your special place for your anniversary. So she's referring to Leavenworth, Washington. We're not. Um, since we no longer live in Washington, it's not really feasible for us to go there every year for our anniversary. We need to come up with a new, a new special place to go for our anniversary. We definitely miss Leavenworth. We went every year pretty much since we've known each other up until this last year. And it's just such a beautiful place. If you can ever make it to Leavenworth, Washington, especially around the holidays, I highly recommend. And like I said, we'll definitely have to come up with some type of desert thing that we can do for our anniversary. So here's the completed look, and I wanna say a huge thank you to everybody who asked questions. Definitely definitely let me know down in the comments if you would like a part two, maybe with a hair tutorial, and if you have any other questions that you would like me to add to the list for part two. If I didn't get to your question, I'm hoping that we can do this again and I'll be able to answer your question. And again, thank you to everybody who took time to ask a question over on Instagram and in my Facebook group. So if you enjoyed today's video, give it a big, huge thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and your bell's turned on so you never miss a future video. And of course, check out the description box down below. I will list all of my skincare, all of the makeup that I wore today. Everything will be down in the description box with links. So easy to do some shopping as well as nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my other favorite things. And don't forget to come on over, join our Facebook group, we would love to have you. Thank you for watching. Happy Sunday, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.